Where am I gonna put my coffee cup? I don't know. I think sometimes I forget just how spoiled I've been and what a reality there is in my life as far as God's concerned about how he's been a part of my life from probably the moment I was born till the day I die. I mean, I'd like to think that, you know, I knew him before 1974, but I didn't. I got saved in 1974 in the Jesus movement. But, you know, one of the things you discover if you've been a Christian for very long or if you've taken the time to understand how God operates or how he moves according to his will and his purpose, you realize and recognize in your lifestyle and in your life that you've grown up from that he may have done things for you, with you, and to you, preparing you for the moment that you recognized him in your life and that you actually became a born-again Christian, that you might have had experiences or there may have been things that he was arranging in your life to prepare you for that time. And you could say from your mother's womb that God called you. And I know looking back at my life, sometimes I see some things that are significant, you know, in mine. And I forget to take the time to recall to myself when moments of discouragement come, just how much God has blessed me with. And so sometimes I get distracted by those things that others may be doing or I feel like I'm not accomplishing when in reality you know God says hey I have given you so much <laughs> and I'm kind of like yeah but I want more <laughs> so here I sit humorously contemplating the new year and the things that I'm doing and the things I want to get done and how God wants me to take the time to make it reality for someone else as opposed to just being self-satisfying and sharing my devotions. Because there's a lot that I'm going to do in the new year that has a lot to do with getting ready for Jesus coming. And I hope you too are planning on that, that you know that we have little time left, that now, after 2012, you know, once you get past all the distractions and the things that might seem like they're fulfillment in the world and how they're really just going in cycles and that you've already seen this a year ago. It's kind of like, just about, think about this for a minute. If I could, you know, get off the topic for a moment. That everything you're looking at as far as the end of the world is concerned, you can, if you can remember it, was happening last year at the same time and the year before. These last three years, as a matter of fact, have been very cyclical. I remember writing, and I went back to see them, some of the writings about telling people, no, Israel is not going to bomb Iran this year. No, Israel is not going to bomb Iran this year. And I remember three years ago, oh, the market's going to crash. Oh, the market's going to crash. And we're still talking about how the world economic system is going to crash. Did we have a crisis? Of course we had a crisis, but that's like any other crisis that we've had before in the stock market. It's not really the monies that are the important thing. It's the cycle that you're seeing. It's happening regularly. Now, when the cycle begins to get tighter and things begin to become more fulfilled, then take your list, whatever it may be, like a lot of prophecy sites have these indicators that they try to set out for you. We would normally call them probability factors. In other words, you can take a mathematical equation and you could sit down and you can work it out. You can say, here's all the prophecies regarding the second coming of Jesus Christ. And you could mathematically equate them into your probability factor. You can work out a scientific equation for that. Then you take all the scriptures that apply to the rapture of the church or the pre-trib harpazo rapture, not saw, whatever you want to call it of the soon coming of Jesus again to snatch away his bride. And you could factor in all those scriptures and give them either a probability of you accept them as all being true or some are possibility true or whatever. But the point being is, even when you factor all those in, you are taking all these equations and factoring them into what we call a probability scenario, where you can 
can speculate or you can kind of get an idea of the times that you live in and whether or not they're going to be fulfilled. Then, if you're really slick, you can work into that a equation of the cyclical fulfillment cycles that seem to happen regularly that they go around in a circle like the ten nations I remember back in the 80s we were talking about how the European economic community was going to come together into ten nations and they're going to be formed like the old Roman Empire and that they're going to you know form this economic sanctions and that it was going to become the euro and then when the euro came along and then it was going to be oh you know the euro's going to dominate not dominate gonna win gonna not win then it keeps going on and on and you see it happening every cyclical time well, at first it was like 10 years apart, the cycles. Then it seemed that they were getting smaller cycles, and now they're getting closer and closer together. When they quit being closer and closer together of all these computations of the cycle that's being repeated, remember, these are fulfilled prophecies or possibilities of how it could be fulfilled coming in full circle, cycling around again until, could it be? And then it goes, no, 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 no. It's like a top spinning, and then finally it just falls over. Well, that's what fulfillment of prophecy is like. God kind of brings things around that kind of look like it till it finally hits. It's the same as a birth pain, how they get closer and closer and closer together until the actual birth, until the water breaks and bingo, here comes baby. Well, that's what's happening, folks. I mean, I don't know how to put it any more blunt, but... Of course we could not have been raptured before. Of course it couldn't have been fulfilled. That's just obvious to a lot of us. But when we tell you that the prophecies that are true could not have been fulfilled until these certain things happen, it's because the probability factor is that it won't happen until after some of the false probabilities aren't true anymore. For instance, this whole doomsday Mayan idea ideology of course those are supposed to distract you of course they're supposed to make people who don't believe in the second coming of Jesus Christ think you're crying wolf when you talk about Jesus is coming it is meant to be that way for those who will not believe that their excuses will cause them to fail in recognizing the signs of the times Jesus was very well aware of that and told us these things now we know after 2012 there is nothing in the foreseeable future that causes us to think oh well you know of course that's going to happen you know <laughs> when the last gravitational supposed collapse is going to happen when the last mayan prophecy is over in 2012 then look for jesus return now you know i'd be lying if i said i thought it was 2013 <laughs> i'm sorry i'd like to make it sooner for you but i can't in the reality of probability factors, you're looking at a window that starts usually around 2014, actually 15, but we'll say 14 to be, you know, kind of play around numbers. Usually from 2015 up to 2022, I mean, the seven year span of, of probability factors that could come about that the second coming rapture happens in that time and then later the second coming. So within those parameters, then you have a high probability factor. When you start hitting percentiles that are like up in the 80s and 90s and they begin to cyclically get smaller and smaller and the window looks like it's getting closer and closer to being shut, you kind of wake up. <laughs> well, that's what don't get carried away with some of these people trying to say that, you know, it's going to happen in 2012. No, it's not. Now, there is a reason why you should be ready. And it's a very serious reason that nobody takes serious. And that's the fact. You could die. Literally. You physically could die today because the probability factors, if you computed the numbers as statistics, if you're a statistician, you can already figure out what your likelihood of dying is in 7 billion people. Okay. And depending on where your country is, ooh, you know what your probability is. Hmm. And judging by the way the world is going violent, your probability factors are getting higher of dying than they are being raptured. It's more likely you might drop dead before the rapture, or you might drop dead before the rapture ever occurs than you actually being taken in the rapture. Now, we won't get into that whole topic, but the point is, be aware that the distractions 
are to keep you from preparing yourself for Jesus coming. You should always be ready, but now you should be paying a little more attention to what you're doing. You should begin to take the time to set aside what you shouldn't be doing anymore and not wasting your time on it. You need to begin to purify your heart, to not become a legalist about your own personal relationship with God, but to begin to make a more excellent and more consistent, persistent time that you spend because the world is invading your time. Everything is after you to spend more time on it than the time with God. Everything wants your attention, but God wants your fellowship to be with Him. You have to fight and redeem the time. Now is the time that God was talking about that the latter generation would need to redeem the time that these days needed to be shortened, that there needed to be more of a consistency and persistency to our faith, that we would go forward, not only proclaiming that Jesus is coming in joy and excitement, at least for those that are going, but also to be aware that you could be a little bit, you know, kind of like not fully clothed, you know? You might be half naked standing there trying to tell people about God. Spend the quality time you need to get right with God. Spend the necessary moments that you need to learn how to love the brethren. Develop the fruit of the Spirit as you begin to cultivate who you are. Bring out your virtues and get rid of your sins. That's where we need to be at this junction in our life. And then maintain that as we go forward. It's time to get in shape, folks. We're in a marathon. We're gonna run a race in 2012. And we're not going to win politics. We're not going to win the nation. We're not going to win Israel. We're not going to win all these other things. We're out to win Jesus himself and to allow him to be the light in us, to shine to a world that's getting darker by the moment. Because the morals, the standards, the ethics, the facts of the Bible, our own Christianity, religious marriages, as well as children, disciplines, are all going downhill fast. Even those who are in the church, who look like they're so full of ministry, all have second and third marriages. Some fourth or fifth, even sixth, because they jumped from church to church so that they didn't have to talk about what they've been through in their divorce. That shouldn't be so. And then you have broken children who don't know what the purpose of a relationship is. It's okay if you've gone through that and you're doing that, but now you need to stop your childish ways. You need to turn again to the Lord. You need to make and redeem the time for the day is at hand and it's getting evil out there. Now is the time. Make a resolution in 2012 to choose you this day whom you will serve and not serve anymore the gods of men like you've been doing with toys and shopping and distractions and the latest health craze in the Christian world, the latest Christian video to buy and the latest Christian CD. Let's be missionaries. Let's get back to the root of what Jesus said in denying yourself, taking up your cross and following him. I have stripped you of much that it should be truly a life of well-being. Build up stone upon stone upon a firm foundation, and that rock is your master. The rock is Jesus. A life of discipline and of joyous fulfillment is to be yours. Never lose sight of the glorious work to which you have been called, for many are called, but few are chosen. I have called you. I will choose you. Let no riches... No ease entice you from the path of miracle working with me upon which your feet are set, for I have called you to be a witness unto the nations. Love and laugh, trust and pray, but ride on now in a loving humility to victory and set your feet on the right path that you should walk with me today and talk with me in every way that you're using your life, for I will hold you accountable for the, all the things that you have done even the good and the bad.